What's up, catfish people? How you doing? Dieter Melhorn here. Getting the camera adjusted for you. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's working. Because work leads to a prosperous nation. We need a prosperous nation. And so I hope you guys are working. And I hope you have your YouTube app up on your phone. And I hope you're surreptitiously sneaking over and putting in your earbuds right now. And kind of spinning your monitor with your back <clears throat> to the rest of the office so you can uh, or with the monitor to the rest of the office so you can sneak and watch YouTube some of you road warriors I hope you're pulling over on the side of the road somewhere and just sitting back on some YouTube and tuning in no seriously uh, I got the day off today so uh, trying to get a show in get some stuff shot decided to come out on the water do some fishing uh, taking a gamble today uh, as many of you know, we've had some cold temperatures. Well, we had some storms come through first that pretty much hit most everybody in the country. Uh, and then we had some uh, pretty bad wind yesterday. Uh, it was supposed to get windy today. It was a windy mess this weekend. And uh, now we're under bluebird skies. And it's just a whole bad combination of a whole lot of stuff that typically leads me when you get these up, oh, temperature drop too. It's 32 degrees here this morning in the south, which is pretty chilly for us after having some highs in the upper 70s, near 80s. So anyway, uh, that is what I call instability. So uh, I decided to take a gamble. Uh, I figured they would be releasing water this morning uh, for peak energy demand. I was correct, got out here, water's moving, and uh, anchored up on some channel ledges. Uh, I figured these fish are probably gonna be pulled up on some structure with this instability and dropping water temperatures. I think they're down to 59, we're up around 65. So, uh, so yeah, I took a gamble on that plant and uh, it paid off. If you follow me on Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook, I've got a picture up of one of the fish. I'm also on Instagram, Dieter Melhorn. I got a picture up here of one of the fish I caught in the 20s, ended up catching another one, <clears throat> and ended up catching a flathead right before I pulled up to come down here. So, uh, so yeah, that paid off on that, uh, that little stretch up through there. Decided to relocate down here. I've typically got a little bit better cell service down here, and I uh, was going to go live on here. I went live on my Facebook page. I decided to go live on here, and, uh, Say hey to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, just got set up, just got the baits out, just got everything squared away on the deck. So I decided to go live fairly early to, uh, just in case I get a quick bite. Uh, the last place I anchored up at, I sat there for about 90 minutes and probably I caught fish fairly consistently about every 10 or 15 minutes and then the bite started to wane. So uh, I think with the way this my hypothesis on this is that these fish are close to structure. They're probably not moving a lot, probably not cruising around feeding. So I think uh, it's a deal where you probably pick some fish off and after a while it's probably time to get up and move. Uh, especially we got some current going in the river. I think they're gonna be holding on stuff. Uh, now granted, you could sit there all day and if all of a sudden some schools of fish start to feed, you can catch them. But my theory is, uh, Probably in those kind of scenarios when that bite starts to wane, it's probably time to pack up and make a move. So that's what I did. I decided to come out here and go live. So I'm fishing with, I've uh, got eight rods in the water. Uh, four of them have Santee style drift rigs. So the bait will float up off the bottom in the current. Four of them are on uh, Carolina rigs uh, with the uh, new sinker slides, which I don't have one available. The uh, sinker slides from Rig Wrap. I'm uh, putting those through the paces out here, trying those out. Uh, basically a Carolina rig on the bottom. The last stop, every fish came off a Carolina rig for what it's worth. Don't know why it's weird like that some days. Uh, it may just be chance, uh, but yeah, every fish was off a Carolina rig that was laid on the bottom. So who knows why that is. Uh, maybe the fish hit that better when they're not feeding heavily. I don't know. I uh, had, uh, like I said, uh, Two blues in the 20s and that uh, low teener flathead. So uh, pretty good day. Uh, I made a change here to an area. It's kind of a perfect combination of a whole lot of stuff and it's either gonna be hero or zero. I'm on a channel ledge again. I'm also on a mud line. And I've also got extremely shallow water on one side, extremely deep on the other. Common wisdom and thinking would go, wow, you're in a place where you're gonna have something. Well, we'll see. Uh, water's been on for a while now, uh, at least three hours. So uh, 
generally speaking with the way our reservoirs and our river system works usually a pretty good feeding frenzy when it starts and uh, then the fish kind of lock up and start ducking in the stuff I know you guys that fish constant river current uh, it's it's a little different game than what we've got here ours is intermittent it's on and off it's almost like a tide uh, it's almost like fishing tidal water it's on it's off uh, the bad thing is it's in many cases horribly unpredictable uh, until you kind of get to the feel of what's going on and pay attention to the weather or watch what's going on with the weather that kind of thing so uh, which uh, circles me back to our temperatures this morning it was pretty cold for us uh, 32 degrees of frost morning this late in the month is uh, it's colder than normal is what it comes down to um, and that's made kind of some inconsistencies with what's going on with the bite, at least what I'm seeing from what I'm hearing. Uh, there's good days and there's bad days. Uh, you know, this is that time of the year where you can go out and you won't catch any fish. And, well, so-and-so killed them last week. Well, last week can be the difference between night and day. Uh, today and this weekend can be the difference between night and day, uh, especially if it starts to warm up and starts to trend warmer. I'm ready to flathead fish. I just don't have a lot of confidence in it yet, especially with these. I picked one off today, but, uh, you know, that's a fish coming on. Cut bait, hanging on some structure. So uh, that's kind of my world. Uh, so far, nothing here. Like I said, I've got baits and everything from 3 to 25 feet of water right here. So uh, it's a good covering. Uh, I'm not a – I am anchored, in case I didn't say that. I know people – uh, some of my stuff, I drift a lot. I love to drift. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of drifting in muddy water uh, or dingy water. Uh, part of that is uh, I think it's kind of a I don't know that it's that fish don't won't bite drift rigs in muddy water. I think they will. I just think the circumstances that generally lead to us having muddy water here. I know some places it's muddy and dingy all the time. Here in our reservoirs generally they remain halfway clear and they start to muddy or dirty up whenever you get an influx of rainwater. And where I'm going with this is, when you get that influx of rainwater, it's typically a day or two after some heavy rains, which is what we had Sunday. What also comes with that is some of this bluebird skies that you can see over my shoulder. Uh, high UV uh, pressure changes. Uh, some people believe in pressure changes. I'm not convinced they affect fish 20 feet down in the lake. Uh, I think some of the UV light and some of that stuff may have more of an impact. But anyway, circle back to what I was saying with the drifting. I have more confidence anchoring in muddy water, dingy water, dirty water than I do drifting through it. Not that you can't catch fish. That's just where my confidence is with it. So. Uh, just some food for thought. Uh, you catch a lot of fish in muddy water. Uh, a lot of them, they're in there. It really doesn't affect the bite on them like it does with striper and white perch, that kind of thing. But uh, I like to anchor, uh, especially, you know, when we've got some current and stuff. Let me tighten this one line up. Hang on. That one was horribly slack. Sorry about that. Uh, that one had a lot of slack in it. So that's kind of the plan. I've got some uh, bluegill and some white perch. Uh, I caught some bluegill the other day before my trip down to Watery, uh, which is the video that I posted yesterday here on YouTube. Uh, my son and I were fishing, and uh, we picked off a few perch down there. Even though I'll be honest, the perch bite's been tough lately. Um, I know some of these perch are making the river run. Uh, they're running upriver. And they're just saying, Tim, it's getting on my nerve. Uh, they spawn in a similar matter, manner to the striper because they're a cousin to the striper. White perch are te technically not even a perch from what I understand. It's a, like a yellow perch. They're not in a perch family. They're in a the striper family. But I digress. This is a catfish show. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, they've been hard to catch. Uh, not as stacked up as I thought they would be. So uh, that's where we're at with that. Um, so I've got the brim, I've got the bluegill. Uh, for some reason, and I fished yesterday, shot a show yesterday. Uh, nothing on perch heads for some reason, which is odd. Typically, I get hit on those things pretty good. Uh, not a single fish came on them. I caught about a dozen cats yesterday. Nothing on them, nothing on them today, which is kind of odd. Everything has been coming on pieces of the fillet. And 
just kind of odd, just because it's, I don't know. Not gonna dwell on it. I could have a monster at any time eat one of those big old perch heads because some of the biggest catfish I've ever caught have come on perch heads and some of them as big as the palm of your hand. Uh, thought I had a rod creek. But uh, that's what's going on. Uh, like I said, I'm hoping maybe there's something around this mud line. I've got lines into the clear water. Uh, there's a pocket here where it's eddied up and there's actually still some clear water. And then there's some muddy stuff back over my shoulder so it's kind of a good combination of a lot of stuff uh but you know how it goes with fishing sometimes the perfect scenario and the perfect setup uh is missing the one variable and that's uh biting fish and sometimes you get them sometimes you don't the uh, last place i parked at was complete mud water uh there was semi shallow but everything came off of the deeper on the they were hung on the ledge is what it was it was in the deeper water where it started to drop off just so you guys know, and I'm going to do a little in, more in-depth explanation when I, I'm doing an edited version of this show. Uh, for some of you that don't know, I'm going to go explain what I mean by ledge and kind of go into some depth on that. Uh, basically, a ledge is any place where you start to get, you got the river down here, the bottom, river channel, or it can just be a flat. Then you have some kind of ledge that comes up. It can be a channel ledge, it can be a point that's coming out. Uh, it's a natural structure. Fish I like to hang on that. Uh, I've said before, if you have an aquarium at home and it has nothing in it, uh, put a piece of black tape on the outside of it. Uh, put a black place on it. Fish will hang around that. They'll think it's something solid. It's a, you know, my thinking is it's a uh, protection for them. Uh, they feel comfortable because that's one side they can't get eaten from. So uh, they hang kind of close to it. Uh, it gives, you know, that's one side you ain't got to worry about somebody coming through a wall to get you. So you ain't got to worry about somebody coming out of a channel ledge to come bite you. So I think that has something to do with it. Also, depending on if you're in an area, it's got river current and they're in constant current. Uh, there's places where you can get breaks from the current there. So uh, a good example is if you've ever, and I'm going to go into this one of my videos, fishing a place, say you got a creek like this, trees on both sides. The wind, even if the wind's blowing this way, will start to funnel down between those trees. And those areas around the edge don't get as much wind. And it's the same thing around those ledges. They generally, as it's an outside bend, don't get as much stuff sweeping up on them. So a little less current, places to hide behind, especially if they create a point or something like that. So anyway, a whole lot of stuff that a lot of people know, but there's also a lot of people, new people that are watching my channel that don't understand what all those different terminologies are that a lot of us use between points and channels, channel edges, river channels, flats, all that kind of stuff. It's almost worth doing an entire video on, to be honest, and explain some of this terminology. Um, and some of it gets minced up from person to person too, which makes it even worse. Some people call different things different names and that can kind of get confusion. So that may be a video that we're doing. So uh, if you joined in late, Boat swinging, sorry. If you join in late, I'm um, anchored up, uh, fishing some channel edges here. We've uh, had some temperature swings and water temperature swings and rain and cold and hot. And, eh, so I'm just gambling that there's some fish on some structure. The last place I fished earlier this morning produced fish and uh, nothing so far. So uh, I was hoping as soon as I got set up here, I'd go and turn the camera on. It took about 15 minutes to get hit at the last one. So I'm um, hoping maybe we can get one on camera. Let me grab a drink, hang on. Hoping maybe we can get one on camera, but I figured, uh, I uh, hopefully you watched Catfish Weekly last night. Uh, I figured since the Northwoods angling guy sat there for the entire show and did not catch a fish, I had nothing to lose by going live here on YouTube. So if I don't catch one, well, I can say, hey, listen, they're big time, okay? They've got 10,000 subscribers. I don't have that. I'm a nobody. So if they didn't catch them, I don't catch one. There's no pressure. So, But if I do catch one, I'll send this video to Luke to make sure that he sees it. So here's to you, pal. Sun drop. One was moving there. Uh, supposed to be getting some more wind this afternoon. Uh, that's been kind of, uh, that's been a thing this spring. It's just been a lot of wind. And uh, 
I don't mind fishing in the wind. Uh, as a matter of fact, I love to drift in it. I can slow my boat down in it without a problem. Was fishing in it yesterday. It was not horrible yesterday. Uh, it was around 12 to 14 sustained. Um, some guys that were up in the 20s. But, um, I can slow my boat down in it. I can fish in it. Um, but there are some times when you want to anchor. And uh, you can anchor in it. It's just a lot more work. Any of you guys that anchor your boat know that depending on the hull type and everything else, if you're trying to anchor, especially when you're not in current and you're trying to do it in the wind, it's a little more of a, uh, a little more struggle, a little more work. So uh, sometimes I just want a good, calm day, and that's what I'm waiting for, is a good, calm day. Um, and a warm day. I'm going to get up when it's 60 degrees, and I'm going to put on a pair of shorts, a pair of crods, and I'm going to get up before daylight, and I'm going to go out, and I want a flathead fish. But we're just not there yet. Um, I heard some rumors yesterday that they were catching some decent flatheads in eastern Tennessee, which really surprises me. If any of y'all know anything about that, by the way, uh, put something in the uh, feed here uh, in the little chat section because I'm thinking of fishing Tennessee uh, this weekend. So I uh, heard they were catching some, which surprises me because typically their water is a little bit colder than it is here. Um, so that would be interesting if you're getting something going, but I'm just not seeing, just not getting the vibe yet. So um, I don't know. I just don't get the vibe yet that the flathead bite's really, really good and predictable. There's always somebody. You can always catch some. Uh, they're 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 always around, but it's just like if we got like a week of it creeping and staying in the 60s. I, th I think it would get something going, but it is what it is. You fish when you can and. Then, fish the conditions you got and soon enough it's going to be 90 degrees and the bimini is going to be up and we're going to be sweating and we're going to be complaining that it's too hot it's too hot to fish i don't want to fish at night because it's so hot blah 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 pleasure boats are going to be everywhere there's going to be ski boats running by there's going to be jet skis so i guess we need to enjoy what we got right now so so you set up real quick uh, let me flip this puppy around Typical setup. I've got my uh, yeah, plug right here. There we go. It's eight big cat fever rods spread out around the boat. I've got them stacked up here because this is where the river channel's at. So I've got uh, four of them kind of on that side. Got two out the back here, probably six, seven, eight feet of water. Got these over here. Got my old ancient mariner that I'm still trying out. She's working good. Uh, Caught a couple of teener and a 20 on her. So she's working good. And I've still got the lose that I'm putting through the paces. Haven't stripped the gears out of any of them yet. So uh, they're working. Uh, some of y'all have asked about the setup and everything. I've got all my rod holders basically on the perimeter. Uh, did that rod just get bit? Oh, oh I thought I'd seen a bop bop. Maybe it wasn't. I'd love to get a takedown. Anyway, I don't use a rod rack. A lot of guys have a rack that spans this area back here. Uh, my problem is I utilize rods and stuff. I've got a live well here. It keeps my little babies in. I've also got battery access and stuff back here. Plus, uh, dealing with anchors out the back of the boat, over the back. I would just hate to have a rack across here. So. What I've got, I've got these two that are flush into the hole. Nice or easy to get out of the way. You can stand up here without tripping over anything. Uh, I've got that one there on the sides is basically pointed back. Same thing on this side. So that basically gives me four rods straight out the back. Then I go to these on the side. This one is canted a little bit that way, a little bit that way, and that one's up that way. I've actually got a few more of these that I'm going to add for uh, flathead season here as we do more anchoring up. Now what do we have here? This went real slack to that side for some reason. That's a lot of slack line. That's weird. Boat move? Sorry, we're figuring something out here. But anyway, 
that's kind of what the setup is and obviously it's duplicated on this side so that's kind of the way i got my boat rigged up it just frees me up with a lot of space back here in the back to fish uh pretty much everything is done back here and i call it the cockpit uh basically from the steering console back uh, i'm in a center console boat so it's uh, 360 degrees of fishing on the edges uh, nothing to get in your way and then the fronts for storage i've got camera gear up here right now but i can put a live wheel in here i've got a, a 30 gallon live wheel i can put in there if i'm carrying large amounts of bait uh, i've actually got some tie downs up here that i can move these things here and here they're actually made for yeti coolers but they're flush to the surface, which are pretty cool. You can't trip over them. So you can still get up here and throw a cast net. But you can run straps through there to hold down a big anchor box or something like that. Normally I keep my anchors in here. Easy access out the top in the water. But yeah, if I'm storing extra stuff, if I'm doing any saltwater fishing, carrying chum boxes, that kind of stuff, I've got room for that. Obviously my cooler here. Ice is about gone, so it's the salsa. Life goes on. So, there's your quick uh, boat tour. Everybody always asks about that, and I'll need to do an edited video of it at some point and uh, show everybody around the boat. But that's kind of the way I set it up. Everybody's got a different setup. Everybody's got different boats that they like. Let me get this back in the holder so you're not getting dizzy. Uh, I like my skiff. Uh, I like a center console. Uh, I would probably like a walk-through windshield if I fished it enough. I uh, can get used to it. Uh, it's just I do like the fishability of a center console. I like being able to go around. The, the, the point to having one is you got 360-degree fishing. Uh, it, it, you know, most places is not going to be an issue with going around the boat, but uh, there's nothing to get in the way when you're going to throw out the anchor or put down a trolling motor. Uh, it's just nice having that. That one... I swear that one got hit. Anyway, uh, it's nice not having stuff in the way. Um, so uh, the walk-through windshields are nice because you got that nice big wind protection, rain protection when you're riding around. Uh, so again, there's advantages to everything. This is a DLV Carolina Skiff, so it's not. Uh, it's better than the DLX, which is the flat bottom. But uh, you know, this has a little bit of V and a little bit of turn to it. But it's not a deep V boat, so. Uh, the trade-off is a deep V fiberglass boat will ride a heck of a lot better than this one will in rough water. The trade-off is you lose a lot of space on the front of it because the way they taper and cut down at the front. So again, there's a trade-off for everything. Uh, the uh, big concern I have with the metal boats, the John boats, the, the Sea Arc types is uh, the safety of them uh, is the biggest concern. Uh, if you're fishing areas where you're not getting in any rough water, it's not that much of a concern, but uh, having low size and a low transom, if you fish in areas where you're anchoring in rough water, you start getting into some two or three foot swells, um, it does not take a lot to sink one of those boats, and that's been a concern of mine. Uh, I've known four of them that have sank now, and uh, some close calls with some other ones. And, uh, that's a concern with the metal ones. Uh, what I'm hoping to see happen is uh, somebody create a true catfish boat that's not a modification of something that already exists. I mean, obviously about every hull design has been created, but uh, I would just, I, I think there's a lot of room for, the perfect boat has not been built, is what I'm getting at. Uh, the perfect catfish boat has not been built. There have been some modifications to older boats. I think Jeff Manning has one that is dadgum near as good a catfish boat as you can get. He took an old 80 style hull and gutted stuff, moved the console forward, and uh, it's, a, it's a good setup. Uh, I think the new ones that are being built and sold are uh, far from being uh, ideal. Um, there's probably no perfect boat, but we're going to see one. We're going to see something better come out. So enough of a grant. Oh, and I'm running a Suzuki motor. It's a 90 horsepower. It's not fast. Uh, if y'all haven't figured it out with me, I'm a tight wad. Uh, and I've got a hair in my face. Uh, I'm a tight wad. Uh, <laughs> I hate to spend money. I don't mind spending money. I like to spend it wisely. 
Uh, I've got a 90. Uh, this thing will run a 115. I will probably put a 115 on it when I replace this thing. Uh, but I'm not a big, super big motor. It's great to go 50 or 60 miles an hour, but you also spend a whole lot of money on gas to be able to go 50 or 60 miles an hour. And I would rather spend that money on more fishing trips than one fishing trip where I got to go fast. So that's just me. Uh, if you fishing in tournaments and that kind of thing, being able to go fast uh, is a, it can be a benefit uh, depending on the body of water. And uh, so uh, that's, that's a, a good place to have one. And it's probably one of the things that's going to drive up the cost of tournament fishing. Uh, we're seeing a, uh, Significant increase, and I had this conversation. This may be the thing, Lyle. If you're listening, I'd love to come on the show and talk about on Catfish Weekly. Is we're starting to see the ratcheting up and the increase in the the uh, what it, what you got to pay to play in catfish tournaments, and uh, it's been really within the five years. There's been a pretty big increase in it, so uh, which sucks for the new people and people who are trying to get into it because it can be intimidating. So. Anyway, it is what it is. I say a uh, good topic for a good long show. So. I was going to say y'all are bad luck because I have not had a bite since I've been here. I said that the other day that y'all were bad luck and then we ended up catching a, uh, I want to say it was a 14 pounder, 14, 15 pounder on watery. So, let's see what happens. See what happens. I've been here. How long have I been on here? I've been on here 20 minutes, so that means I've been sitting here 26 minutes. So, uh, hey brother, I'll bring you some luck. Oh, Catfish Weekly is here. Catfish Weekly, I don't know if you were here a minute ago, but I said I wanna, I, I, oh by the way, thanks for the invitation to be on the show. I didn't see the message on Facebook to be on the show, so I apologize for that. Uh, it's great to see Luke on there, though, and the guys from Northwoods. Uh, but what I was saying there, Catfish Weekly, was that a good topic I wouldn't mind talking about because I don't have a uh, dog in the fight, so to speak. I'm not going to come out and preach the uh, or talk the company line on the tournament thing. But I've got some opinions on tournaments from somebody who fishes them, talks to people who do, do not fish them, and talks to a bunch of people who does fish them. I'll be honest about it because I don't have to kiss anybody's butt on it. Uh, the state of tournament fishing. I think uh, uh, I think that would be a good show topic, and uh, where it's going and what's going on with it, and uh, blah 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 blah. So uh, then we can talk about pay lakes. Everybody likes to talk about pay lakes. So that's another good topic that we can talk about. <laughs> oh, the little bomb. I think I'd do better at a pay lake right now because uh, I've gotten bit here, and I'm kind of surprised. This is a good combination sweet spot of stuff the only thing that's lurking in the back of my mind is that this is one of them places that every time I've caught a monster fish here yeah I've never caught that many fish it's been a one or two fish bite so that's why I'm gonna give it a little long while longer that's swimming off that line is swimming off you know I'm pretty sure that line is swimming off. Yep, it's swimming off. How oh, is it not? Dang! I was right, he was swimming off. He swam all the way up here into about a foot of water. See what happened? My sinker got weird on me. All right, bear with me. I got to get this. It's not a huge one. I got to get him in the boat. So. Still here, folks. I've not done a dock and fallen in the lake. I'm just moving over to the other side of the boat. Weird, weird bite on that one. I'll tell you about it in a second. It's a 
weird fish. All right, I'm there. Where are we at? Female covered in mud. There. Hello, Lyle. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Eating mussels. Okay. Up on the hump. What do you mean? I know they're watching, but it, they're our friends. Lyle makes that mean rod that hurts people. He, that, he lets them go, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, tell me the rest. <sighs> Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's not nice. Oh, that's not nice to say. That's, that's terrible to say. I know that Luke didn't catch a fish last night in an hour on TV on Catfish Weekly, and I did. <sighs> he's not a loser. He's a good guy. He's a good fisherman. I know he would eat you, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put you back alive. Say bye to everybody. <laughs> hey, Luke. I love you, buddy. Thank God I caught that fish so I can just rub it in now. Woo! Oh, wait, wait, wait. What was that? I can hear it from Minnesota. Well, you're not sitting in snow down there. We were sitting in snow. It's cold here. That's relatively cold for you. It's relatively cold for us. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, somebody send Luke a message, please. Make sure he sees that. Uh, let me get, grab the rod. Hang on. Uh, again, we're 100% today on bottom baits. Uh, what happened was, for you folks, let me plug this back in. Just make sure this phone stays powered up. Let me explain to you what happened and what I mean by swimming off. Uh, the rod was cast out that way. Okay, I'm going to use my arm. The rod was cast that way. I look up, the rod never bends, okay? The line's over here. So it goes from here to here. The line's over here, the rod never moved. So for you new folks, what that means is is that the fish is taking your bait and starting to swim towards you. It's never really loaded the rod up. Uh, the fish really never knew it was hooked. So reeled down on it to begin with, didn't think anything was on it. Uh, he had swam almost up to the boat. He came out of the deep water, up onto the shallow part. And then finally, once I realized the line was behind the boat, I knew he was back there, but uh, came in very, Easily, so you hunt. Sometimes you don't see the rod move, is what I'm getting at. But uh, I'll show you the rig. It's a Carolina rig, is all it is. It's a hooker terminal tackle circle hook on that end, a piece of Andy leader. If you can see that, it's a piece of mono leader. I don't use anything fancy. Uh, I got just a regular snap swivel, and then I got one of these sinker slides. Woohoo! It's like a little rope man there on the rope course. Woohoo! I got a slinker slide from Hooker's Terminal Tackle. What that is, I know some of you wonder, what's a, what is, let me make sure my battery's charged, phone is running good. Hopefully it is. Okay. It's basically a piece of plastic that you can attach a sinker to very easily. Sinker goes on, it comes off. And that's actually a big sinker to get on there. I'm using a bank sinker, just out of ease of operation. You put it on and off. And the cool thing is, sinker slides, a spit. Sinker slides have been around forever. These are the easy sinker slide. What's cool about them is they come off. It's got two chambers, you pop it out of the top chamber, come across through there, come across through there, and boom, it's off your line. It's kind of cool, huh? Uh, it means you don't have to cut your line to put one of these on. Normally you have to cut your line water, you get some current. Uh, 
or if you're fishing the ocean, it's a tide change. You can put another one on the line and just, you know, put a bigger weight on and it goes sliding right through there. It's like a little ropes course, isn't it? Whee! Sugar slide! Whee! So anyway, it's a cool product. Uh, I've been waiting for these things. <clears throat> Rig Wrap is who sells them. I've got some links. Yeah, I've got a video up about them. Uh, I've been waiting. He's going to get them and like everything being manufactured, uh, it never comes out as quick as you hope it's going to. So uh, I've got some, this was an old Abu Garcia 5000. Some Andy Monster line on there. Some of the new Monster I'm fishing with. 30 pounds. And uh, back to the lake a little bit far. That's on the drop part. Let me get us in the rod holder. So, uh, yeah, I've got one wind coming this way. Looks like there's still some current currents going that way, so kind of stuck in the middle again. So that's kind of what's going on out here. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, you got to see me catch a fish, which is uh, more than I can say for Northwoods Angling last night on Catfish Weekly. Oh, I had to show it again. I'm sorry. I'm just repeating what the fish said. The fish said it, not me. Uh, but now, y'all check out Northwoods Angling. Uh, they're here on YouTube. Got a, uh, uh, a, a great channel. They do some really good stuff. I throw out a whole bunch of content. They throw out really good content. So be sure to check them out and subscribe to them. They tell some good stories, and they fish for a lot of neat stuff. They... Uh, do some sturgeon fishing, some, uh, they were talking about some alligator gar they caught in Texas last night. So, uh, good channel, good variety of stuff if you're looking for something besides just catfish. And uh, uh, he's got links, uh, Luke has links to his social media on there. And uh, you can start following him on Facebook because uh, he does a lot of live feeds on Facebook too. So, uh, I think they're actually doing uh, some dual feeds uh, on Facebook and YouTube. So, yeah, Northwoods Angling, good group of guys. And, uh, they're, they're one of the channels I'm chasing. I'm trying to catch them, but they keep growing uh, faster uh, faster than I can catch up to them. So uh, they're uh, putting out good content. It's just going to get better and better. And uh, good guys. like to give them a hard time. Don't get too often because they catch some really big fish. And uh, we were trying to get together in Florida. It was this close. And I think we're going to be there a week apart. So, uh, so all I can say is you better catch a 1,000-pound hand. notified and uh, we'll see you on the water.